So I'd like to welcome Helen Tanner up, up on station, Data, Data Cube. So Helen is the co-founder of Data Cube. Um, uh, she is a fanatic about data, set up Data Cube back in 2017, and they, um, uh, they use automated board reporting. Uh, they have cool visuals and predictive models and use a lot of AI. Data Cube itself is in Europe, New Zealand, uh, all, Australia, all over the place. Uh, as I say, she's a self-confessed data nerd. She has a, or Data Cube have a, a product called Boom Board, which is an all-in-one business uh, a dashboard where you can see what your data is going on. Uh, and if you ever speak to Helen for longer than five minutes, she will say, you as a business owner should be checking your data like you check the weather. So with that introduction, if I can hand you've you over. It. I don't need to. Do you want the I'm zapper? done now. That was it. That was it. Thank you very much. Cool. Hello, everybody. Thank you, thank you for your time and attention. Um, lo lovely to be here. Um, I've never been here before. I came down from Bristol. It took me way longer than I thought, so hence I was a little bit late. Um, but lovely to see you all. So um, this is me, um, a blatant book, book um, plug here. I wrote this during COVID, didn't have much else to do. So, um, so yeah, I'm the founder of DataQ. Before that, I worked at the Met Office. I worked in big corporates for a long time, started as a coder mainly worked in marketing, product, commercial roles, and then set up Data Cubed six years ago. And we've done lots of different projects for lots of different businesses, mo mostly SMEs, so mostly kind of small businesses and some charities and public sector in there as well. So today I thought I'd talk about harnessing the power, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself, harnessing the power of data and making it work for you. So um, first of all, just let's, let's get back to basics, make sure we're clear on what do I actually mean by data. Then I'm going to talk a little bit about the opportunities you can use uh, to create extra money, extra better service innovation, all those types of things using data. And then give you some practical steps of how you can move that forward as um, a mix of lots of business leaders and some of you techies as well. So the premise behind this is um, that every business has exactly the same problem. And, and that problem is caused by the fact that they end up with multiple data sources that are often disparate and disconnected like some of you filled out in that survey. And even small businesses, we work with businesses that are, you know, might have five people, 10 people, 15, can very easily have 30 different data sources, 20 different data sources. If you think all about all the different tools in your business and therefore miss a single source of truth. And that's because we all, as a, as a small business owner, or as, uh, all of you probably work in different size businesses, but you'll often have some kind of finance tool, some kind of email tool that's sending communications out, some kind of customer database. It might be a CRM or it might be spreadsheets. You'll probably be doing surveys. You'll undoubtedly be using lots of different social media, all different tools that you'll very quickly have a range of different sources. And some of these logos are probably familiar to some of you in the room. So even startups can very quickly have 10 different data sources all over the place that are totally disconnected already, and they've only just begun. Yet alone when you get to a kind of um, 100, 500,000 person business, you might end up with getting on for 100 different data sources. So that's, that's the root cause of the problem that we're solving for our clients. But before we go into how you could solve it, how you can make that opportunity, I wanted to kind of get back to basics in terms of what do I mean by data? So first of all, I want you to think about your journey here today and the types of things you've done today. Can you see that? Sorry, I'm looking around the corner. Um, so think about your journey here. You probably awoke to an alarm in some way. Um, you might have checked on the weather, perhaps not in Sacramento, but in, in Yeovil. Um, you probably would have looked at a map potentially, and depending on where you've gone today, you might have had a look at a map. You might have been using a train, a bus, use some kind of public transport system. You might have paid for something with your watch or with your, I think I'm slightly pointing at the wrong place here. Oh, at your, with your phone. Um, you might have um, listened to some music at some point today. You probably read some emails at some point. You have undoubtedly Googled something at some point today if you're anything like me. Um, you could have paid for parking somewhere and kind of registered your card somewhere. If you haven't done any of that, you've probably been caught on some CCTV camera somewhere in terms of imagery. And perhaps you filled out a survey or something. So very easily, all of us just doing our everyday activity, we are 
adding to this data source all over the place. But let's focus a little bit more on the types of data that you're going to have in the businesses and organisations that you're working with, because that can fall into lots of different categories as well. So you've probably got a website. So you've probably got all different information on who's coming to your website. You undoubtedly will have emails being sent around your organisation and externally. Um, you'll probably be doing different calls and all, all different things going on, whether that's with customers or partners. You'll be quoting in some way um, and giving prices out in some way. You might have customer people on the phone talking to people and, and voice recordings that are getting recorded. Um, you could have a customer system that's logging all your customer details. You could have invoices going out. You could have, undoubtedly, you'll have expenses and costs and finance reports, social media activity. It goes on and on, right? Mail, you might, you know, perhaps a bit old school, you might have mail coming in, you might have surveys. If you've got some kind of shop, you might have footfall information in some way. And it goes on and on in terms of all the different data from project management to your diary management and all those things. So very quickly as a business, um, just to kind of think of the data, it's beyond those spreadsheets that you might typically think of. It might be imagery, it might be voice recordings, it could be all sorts of unstructured data that you could have within your organization depending on how your business works. And what we find is there's uh, some common problems that come up with businesses using data and some of these may be familiar to some of you so data being disconnected this was on the kind of survey at the beginning some of you tick that box i don't remember the exact number but it's really common um, every business we talk to it's very rare that someone says we've got our 20 30 40 50 data sources all entirely connected with all by a, a unique customer id in some way you know i mean that that's never happened in the whole entirety of my experience of working with maybe we've got some people in the room who have got it sorted which is great but mostly there's duplication there's inconsistency you get different answers from different data sources and they're not connected together um, manual processes it's really common to have excel spreadsheets google sheets even the types of organizations we're working with are the the kind of most digitally savvy in their sectors there's still a lot of google sheets and excel spreadsheets with manual processes involved um, you're probably missing insight on who are your highest, highest value customers, who are your most profitable customers, which ones are going up, which ones are going down. That's a really common problem for businesses. Um, often in, within small businesses particularly, you don't have a data team or data expertise to help you. So you're missing that kind of um, data help to get there and it can cause a bit of fear and paralysis and those types of things. Or you might be worried about um, how, how compliant are you and is your data really backed up and are you really secure and those types of things. And particularly when we're all reading the press a lot about breaches and different things. So these are the common things that we find in organisations we talk to have one or all five of these in terms of their worries. So how can you take that forward? You know, how, what, what can you do to overcome some of these things? So just to kind of start with some of the things um, about the value of data. So one of the questions on the board was how valuable could it be to you? So the types of, oh, these are stats that are out in public domain, but data-driven businesses can make and save more money. So we've got these kind of stats here about the kind of likely to exceed revenue targets, acquire 23 times more customers, see a growth in revenue, growth in profit, and yet most data is unused. So lots of organizations we speak to are spending more on data storage than they are deriving money from the actual data they've got because they save it just in case it's stored somewhere. They're paying all different kind of storage levels, but it's not actually being used. That's a really common kind of challenge because you're saving it just in case, but you're not actually using it. So the types of businesses um, we work with are seeing um, these types of benefits. So a 10% increase in profit or our ROIs, return on investments of five times whatever they invest in data. And that comes from a few different things. That comes from automating manual processes so that you can scale without adding on extra resource. Or it comes from increasing in your conversion rates or increasing your average order value. It comes from directly monetizing data and creating new revenue streams. So depending on your business model, those benefits can come from different places. But as we saw earlier, lots of you perhaps might be underestimating the value of data to your organization. 
So what if you could combine all those different data sources of which I'm sure some of these are at least a little bit familiar to you. If you could combine the ones that are relevant to you into a single source of truth, see all your data in one place, check on it like you check on the weather, as per Richard's response, um, uh, and explore it in a super simple way and ask questions of it in a super simple way. So much like you would use ChatGPT, imagine if you could ask questions of your own data in that simple prompt and response kind of way, right? That, that's, that surely is where we're going to end up with going forward. Um, so that's the way to think about your data. It can power your, your transformation, your business transformation. And the way that it can do that to kind of break that down is imagine you've got all those disconnected data sources of which that list on the left-hand side will be different for every single organization. It will be a mix of third-party software. You'll probably have some proprietary things that you've built. You've probably got some Excel spreadsheets and all different shared drives. Every business will be, have a different mix over on that left-hand side. But imagine if you could put that together into a single source of truth where well, that could be used in loads of different ways. So the basic way, kind of step number one, create some internal reporting that enables your management team, your board, your investors, your team to see just the facts of what you're performing today, right? That's, let's get the baseline sorted. Lots of organizations we talk to haven't got that in place. But then you might take that on to client reporting. You, some, you're going to have different types of clients. You might have consumer clients. You might have business clients. Give them more analytics. You could charge for that in terms of extra kind of revenue streams. It could help you generate more insight on your business. Um, you could create forecasts and predictive models using that data potentially. Depends on your business model and whether that's relevant or valuable. Um, you could segment your data or you could create totally new revenue streams. And that's what we've done for quite a few of our clients is turn that into benchmarking and um, a predictive forecast that you could help your clients see how they might compare or, or look at lookalike clients. You know, customers like you have seen these kind of trends when they've invested in different ways. And that can help you, again, depending on your business model, save money, make money, create new sources of competitive advantage, particularly if you're in really commoditized work environments, might just improve customer service and what you're doing for clients. And then some monetization ideas. So by data, data monetization, monetization, I mean, how do you make more money and charge for the data? And I don't mean selling your data to some dodgy third party marketing organization who's going to hound your customers and you get huge GDPR fines. I mean, you know, doing it in a compliant, customer friendly way. So there's a few ways you can do that. You could use your aggregated anonymized data in the form of insight reports on your market, on your customers. You could package those up for PR and marketing and share those in the market. So it might be a trends report on your sector. It might be looking at how things have changed uh, before and after COVID. All, all different things. You might have all different insight that are relevant to your, your industry. Um, it might be creating a customer benchmarking um, kind of opportunity. So if you think about your customers, depending on what, what you're doing for them, they could be really interested in how they compare to other customers of yours. So you could do anonymized, aggregated benchmarking, showing them how they compare. So think about when you, when you look at your gas and electricity bills, it will show you how you compare to other people in a similar size house, for instance. You could do these types of things for your clients really quickly and easily. That could provide them with a lot of insight. It could help you to upsell and cross-sell to them by saying, look, other organizations are doing more or doing different things to you, and we can help you with those. Or it might be building onto that and creating a new customer portal where you power that with lots of different analytics beyond perhaps the basic reporting that you might be doing them today, uh, powering it with forecasts, giving them real-time access to their pro the data on their products and services, and potentially charging an extra fee for that, right? Adding that as a gold service on perhaps the basic service you're providing to them now, and then monetizing that and creating a portal. It might create, we, we've worked with clients who, this has been a new USP in their commoditized markets to kind of follow that through. So that's some ideas. And then in terms of the ROI, so clearly all of those will cost time and effort for you to pull together. So what would be the return for you? Well, clearly it would depend on your business and, and how it could run. But here are some things to kind of think about in terms of that ROI calculation. So 
by doing automated reporting, you, you could save effort. Now, I'm not saying you, you go out and fire, fire the people who are doing the manual reports. Normally, it's about helping you scale more efficiently. So rather than, you know, we're going to double in size, but you don't want to double in resource, right? That's a really common way of scaling. So it could be that by automating, getting rid of the manual effort, you can double in size, but you don't have to double the team, for instance. It could be that you're automating manual tasks and that enables you to streamline things, make quicker decisions. You could increase your revenue by a certain percentage. Even if that's 1% or 0.1%, depending on your business, that could be pretty huge. And then when it comes to monetization, it could impact you in terms of new products and services or improving your conversion rates. You could increase your revenue, increase your lead generation. Again, if, even if it's at 1%, it could still have a big kind of difference on your business. So often we find that the business cases can stack up really quite easily against a, a reasonably small short-term investment in data. So, I wanted to flag a few things in terms of uh, big opportunities for data. Some of these stats have been around a long time, right? So I'm not going to dwell on them. There is so much data out there, and yet most businesses aren't, do anything, aren't doing anything with their data or not much. And at most, what they're probably doing is basic reporting rather than really maximizing the opportunity. There are also some data myths that we come across quite often. One of them is um, GDPR is stops us from doing any of this hells. You know, everything you've said, we can't do it because of GDPR. That's a really common one. GDPR doesn't stop you doing that. Now, clearly, you need to look at it on your own particular business, your own, your own particular um, permissions that you've got from customers to use their data. But you can do loads of great stuff with anonymized aggregated data that you would have permissions probably to do. So don't, we've, we spoke to people who have, who have deleted data out of fear of JD, GDPR and that's that you don't need to do that. Um, our data isn't good enough. So often I feel like a bit of a, I have a bit of a confessional with business owners where they say, look, our data though hells is the worst you will have ever seen anywhere. It's so embarrassing. Um, it, it never is. You know, it's, it's, um, it, there's always something in there. Um, it will need an expensive IT change. It, it, you can start small. So we're starting on small projects and building up, you know, depending on the size of your organization, depending on your, on your ambitions. It doesn't have to be a huge multi-year, multi-million pound project. It, you can start small and make incremental improvements. And I've touched upon this already. The only way to monetize data is to sell that raw data. It's, it's not the case at all. You can package up that data and sell the insights off it. Um, so hopefully, I've convinced you or at least made you consider that you can make money, be compliant, do right by your customers, all using data. So um, that's what I'd encourage you all to think about. So um, harnessing in terms of what are the practical steps you can take to maximize the value of data. Um, there's a in in the book I wrote, obviously, <laughs> play and plug, um, I've got kind of eight, eight steps in there that you go through. And the, and the first one I'll probably highlight the most is understanding your business needs first. So that would be my big counsel to you. I see a lot of projects where they've wasted time, wasted effort, wasted money, when they've just got into the data, ended up doing what they always done, have done and then realized it hasn't helped them. So really would encourage you to start at the beginning and start with the, what business levers can we pull or push? How can we, how do we make money? What are the opportunities on our market? And then line all everything up behind it in terms of the data. And then following a logical process through that, like defining your data strategy, mapping out those data sources, connecting your data together, and following it all the way through, ultimately to hopefully monetizing your data. So a few things to get started. Um, so I'm mindful we've got um, a mix of people in the room, but so I, I, I don't know how many of you would actually create a database. You might be more likely to brief someone else to or ask someone else to. So this is more about the types of things you might want to consider when you do brief someone else. So step one, beyond, beyond getting those requirements captured and the business needs, is thinking about a database or some type. And the types of things you want to be talking to with your database developer or your data engineer or your data consultancy is these types of things. You know, how can data be connected? How often does the data need to be refreshed? What, how are we going to connect the data with some kind of unique ID? Have we got any restrictions? 
There's all these types of things and I can share these slides with you for you to go through that, but to make sure you're asking the right questions of your developers and you get things set up in the right way. Um, again, that's a surefire way to spend a lot of money and waste a lot of time is not doing it right the first time. Secondly, uh, selecting some kind of reporting tool that's going to help you do your reports and analytics. There are lots of different tools out in the market. Some of them are really cheap. Some of them are free. P Microsoft Power BI, Google, Google Data Studio, picking a tool. Again, you're going to be talking to the people who are going to help you with this decision around, well, who's actually going to use it? When are they going to use it? How are they going to use it? All those types of things. Then I, I would recommend you create some internal reports first. So if you've got nothing, start with internal reporting, create that management level report or a board report or investment report. And again, you want to be thinking about, well, let's not just chuck pretty graphs into, into some kind of format. Let's think about what do the users need? What decisions can they make? What li business levers can they pull? And let's give them the data that's going to enable them to do that. And then, then go on to your customer reporting. So that's an, a, an approach that I would recommend you following through when you come to approach your data. And some of you, by the sounds of it, are further along that journey than others. So just to give you a couple of examples, that's all kind of the theoretical. I thought I'd share a few um, examples of mostly small businesses that have gone through these kind of um, these kind of processes. So this one is Grow Up Farms. They're a vertical farmer. They grow salad and lettuce in indoors in a big factory. They're now selling into um, Tesco. So um, we've done a couple of things with them. One was ESG reporting. So environment, getting all their environmental data together because their big sell of being an indoor um, uh, farmer of salad is that it's really efficient. It's much better for the environment, uses less energy, all of those different things. So therefore they have to prove that. So we've done some work with them around creating an ESG report, which they're sharing publicly because that's part of their PR and part of their rationale as to why that's a really good way forward. So that involved pulling lots of data together from all their energy and water and waste and those things. A uh, different example, a toy manufacturer, Epoch Toys makes Sylvanian families and li those little bead things that you iron, things like that. Um, so with them, it was about finance dashboards. Let's get really simple. Let's make sure we've got the basic kind of finances covered and, and then that's rolled out. Another example, a quiet room or a copywriting agency, so more on the creative space. This was about um, cr creating board, a board level report covering their fi finances, their lead gen, their conversions, their, all of those different things. So kind of business level dashboards. Um, another example, this one is a, a social value dashboard that we created for a charity. This so one's got a little bit of movement in there. Um, so again, that was really important for them. They, they help people recycle goods and go to, get, to uh, take them to good homes and help people um, get shopping for a lower cost. So again, it was proving why they should be getting more funding and more donations. Um, and that's it. So, so that was me. Uh, we're, we're data cubed. We've done lots of different projects. Um, to, as Richard said already, kind of well, we've got some offices all over the world. Um, and we do everything from uh, connecting data together to analyzing it, to monetizing it and transforming businesses. And to leave you with, if you want to get started really quickly, we've got our sister company is called Boomboard. We've got a tool that you, there's a free 14 day trial. If you have any of the data sources on there, like QuickBooks, Xero, um, Google Analytics, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, all of those types of ones, you can plug it in. You'll have instant dashboards in a couple of minutes. It will give you all those views and enable you to benchmark as well. Um, so yeah, so you can sign up for that. That's, that's live now. And then um, it's 15 pound a month after 14 days, but you can have a play for free. And if you drop me a line, I can, I can give you a discount voucher as well. So Thanks. that is me. Well, we've got a bit more time. Let's get to the Thank you. Thank you.